Hi folks, Johnny Davro here. I'm sounding a bit dodgy because I've just had the uh, cold from hell, but I'm over that now. Anyway, this project I'm going to document from start to finish, and uh, hopefully the people find it easy to replicate that way. And uh, at the end of the day, hopefully we'll have a, uh, a usable uh, solar power supply, which is used in a quite unique way, and uh, I consider it uh, to be free energy. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll show you it from start to finish and see what you guys think. Anyway, I went into the uh, local pound shop, and we're quite lucky in the UK because they're everywhere. And uh, they have these two devices here, and I've been looking for like a cheap source for solar cells. And uh, this is a uh, an LED garden light, and this is a solar powered torch. Now this little solar cell produces 5.5 volts. And this one for the uh, garden light produces one and a half volts. Obviously the current is higher in this one than this one. Anyway, I bought one of each and uh, I brought them home to test to see what would be best for this project. And I've decided to go with this one here, which is the 5.5 volt. And uh, I set up a little test circuit. And uh, this is this thing working over here. It's a pendulum. And uh, it's swinging away there. And it's powered by the 5.5 uh, volt solar cell. And it's swinging like a gun. Now the solar cell is sitting here, it's just on the window ledge there, and uh, it's basically charging a capacitor uh, under load up to seven and a half volts or so, and that swings this uh, pendulum like a gun. Now the circuit I'm using, this one here if anyone's interested, it's just basically a solar robotic circuit which I've modified for uh, very low voltage use. And uh, it'll work right down to, like, like you see, 0.75 volts. It may even go lower. Uh, that's the circuit I'm using. But uh, it's not about this, this uh, uh, circuit, this video. It's about this solar charger. So I'll move on to the next stage, which is going to be uh, the, the solar cells. Anyway, I went back to the uh, pound shop and I ended up buying 14 of these key rings. So, so what I'll do now is I'll demand, dismantle them and uh, solder them all together. OK, back in a minute. Okay, to dismantle these, it's just a case of putting a screwdriver in between there and there, levering it open. And uh, that reveals uh, basically three NIMH rechargeable batteries, which people may find a use for, and uh, the nice little solar cell. Anyway, I've dismantled uh, all 14 of these now, and uh, I'm going to remove the batteries from every one of them and uh, wire them in parallel. And uh, that's how I'm going to wire them. If anyone's unsure what I mean by parallel. Uh, so basically I'm just going to connect all the positives together, all the negatives together, so we end up uh, still with 5 volts at the end of the day, but we're going to uh, sum all the currents up, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to run some uh, useful things from this. So uh, uh, I'll be back in a minute when I've soldered them all together. Okay, that's them all soldered up now in parallel. There's a big long line of them. Now, this is probably the most time-consuming and tedious part of the whole project, uh, but it wants doing carefully, and when you've done it, uh, in fact, as you're doing it, it's advisable to check with a multimeter to, to make sure all your connections are okay and there's no dry joints. So what I've done now is I've just hooked my multimeter up, and I'm going to measure from one end to the other end the voltage and to, just to make sure it's okay. So what I've done now is I'm putting this uh, negative lead onto the negative of this, this cell here, and I've already got the positive of the meter on the uh, positive off the other end. And it's showing a reading of uh, 3 volts. And they're all face down, so that's expected. Now I'll just switch them over. So I'll move the positive onto the negative at this end here. And then I'll move this lead onto the positive, the very end one there. And it's showing... 2.8 volts so this is all working great now my next step is to mount it onto this steel ruler and this is why I bought the number of solar cells I did so it would fit onto this steel ruler which is uh, 60 centimeters long that's also from the pound shop and uh, I'm going to use this double-sided sticky tape uh, to mount all these uh, onto this ruler okay it's important that the solar array remains flat uh, for reasons you'll see shortly. Now to ensure this I've just used a, uh, a blob of hot glue on each one and that's keeping them in position now so when I mount it onto the steel ruler uh, it'll be completely and utterly flat. 
which is very important. Now, I might even use hot glue on the uh, ruler. Uh, I've not decided yet, uh, so we'll see what's best as I come to it. Okay, that's it stuck on the ruler, and uh, I used hot glue in the end. It was quick and simple. And I've also attached a small connecting block at this end with the output from the solar cells going into there. Uh, I've got a red and a green wire. The green's my negative. I've got no black. And uh, the last thing to do, and then the project's all finished, is to attach a magnet, one at each end. So one's there, and I'll put another one here. And that's another reason for having a steel ruler. So it makes that easy, although you can just easily glue them on. And that's it, it's done. Now, the whole reason for building that is this up here, fluorescent light tube. And uh, my intention is to uh, attach the uh, little solar array above the fluorescent light bolt, well, tube and use light which is reflected upwards to uh, run some of my experiments. And uh, I would really like to get a Slayer Exciter up there as well and run another bulb uh, next to it. And that would be something, something for nothing, but I'm paying for this light anyway. And light getting reflected upwards is pretty wasted there's no reflector up there to reflect it downwards so I may as well uh, try and use it uh, for something useful and maybe uh, you know if they can get uh, another fluorescent tube to work it would be quite amazing so what I'll do is I'll uh, attach it up there and uh, set some experiments up and see how it does okay I've got the array attached to the metal housing now and it's very unobtrusive you wouldn't even know it was there and I've got some wires attached to it uh, leading down and I've got the pendulum swinging again, and it's uh, swinging really well. I must admit, this is the first pendulum I've ever built, and uh, I think they're very, very uh, economical. I mean, the duty cycle is quite amazing, really. You'll be off to on. And uh, they're very economical, and this is on the uh, minimum setting of this circuit. Got a little LED which flashes away. Now you can use any circuit really for uh, for these pendulums, Bedini, uh, maybe even a dual thief or a reed switch maybe. But uh, it's spinning, it's swinging a lot more than it was before. And the reading on the cap is four, just well, just over four volts and climbing. But uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to have to stabilise this pendulum with some guy wires because it's uh, wobbling a bit. I've used some frame uh, carbon poles from an old tent and there's some sway in that. So I might have to stabilise that with some guy wires but uh, this circuit will run a motor as well. But uh, it's what I'll do now is I'll set the uh, Slayer Exciter up and see uh, how that performs. But uh, I mean I consider that free energy really because uh, I'm not paying for that well I am paying for it but it's wasted energy if it's uh, going straight up but uh, yeah right I'll set the Slayer Exciter up and see how that goes okay I've got the Slayer Exciter set up now and it's running and uh, I'll just sh show you my little AV detector it's just uh, an LED and an Abramenko plug Google Abramenko plug and uh, You'll find out what that is and uh, yeah that's working okay but uh, there's not a big field around this and this is a neon it lights a neon but it's miles away from lighting a fluorescent tube so uh, i think uh, the moral of the story is to use better solar cells really because uh, i think they're fairly joke cells i've used but very very good for running uh, low current drawer applications like pendulums and uh, pulse motors mind you that's quite bright so I hope you've enjoyed this project I've really enjoyed it and uh, I'll keep working on it and uh, I'll save up for some uh, better solar cells I think okay thanks for watching